who is absolutely critical to autonomous aircraft? We'll answer that in a second. Welcome to the AI Guide, where we focus on the human impact of AI. And the answer to the question is NASA. So check this out. In late October, two research helicopters from the manufacturer Sikorsky, a Lockheed Martin company, made a dozen test flights over Long Island Sound, Connecticut, taking care to avoid other aircraft in the area around them. Except the ordinary looking helicopters were flying autonomously, thank you AI, and guided by NASA designed software. However, those other aircraft were virtual, part of a simulation to test pilotless flight systems. This was the first time two autonomous aircraft were flying at one another using NASA designed collision avoidance software. So two fully autonomous helicopters flying towards each other to see if they would avoid each other. This is a collaboration by NASA, Sikorsky, and DARPA, the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, which by the way, uh, come, sponsors a lot of brand new cutting edge technology, DARPA does. Researchers were able to collect data that will advance completely autonomous flight, systems that can operate an aircraft without a pilot from takeoff to landing. So they are very actively working on full autonomy for aircraft. And we're talking about air taxis here. For the test, the team used two experimental helicopters adapted for autonomous systems. Researchers loaded five NASA-designed software systems into the helicopters, which worked with the automated flight system already integrated by Sikorsky and DARPA. So Sikorsky mostly makes military helicopters, which obviously already have an automated flight system in them. Obviously, the goal is to have fully autonomous military aircraft, courtesy of DARPA. These flight tests show how we can stack technologies together to increase automation over time. And stacking technologies, they mean the Sikorsky Autonomous Flight System plus the five NASA systems all stacked together. These efforts demonstrate that we can safely integrate operations to fly the aircraft using several technologies in one navigation tablet. A NASA and a Sikorsky safety pilot on board each helicopter supervised the test flights. Sikorsky's flight autonomy system in combination with NASA software running on tablets the agency designed allowed the helicopters to fly autonomously along multiple planned routes. The tablets also enabled the safety pilots to monitor the flight path options, the software selected whenever course corrections needed to occur. So the pilots were just watching. They were not intervening. They were just sitting there watching the AI do the flying. <laughs> The safety pilots observed how the helicopters responded to software-initiated command, meaning AI-initiated commands, and NASA researchers evaluated how the different software systems worked together to control each aircraft. The tests also assessed how human pilots interacted with the autonomous systems. So they had these things set up to watch the pilots, how they were reacting as they observed what was happening on the tablet, but they were not intervening, as I said a minute ago. They were just watching the reactions of the pilots, basically to see if they were freaking out at all. The team flew 12 successful flights covering 70 different flight test maneuvers and generating more than 30 flight hours for each aircraft. Doesn't sound like a lot, but in aircraft, this is a lot, 30 flight hours. That's almost enough to get a private pilot's license, which is 40 hours. The test demonstrated the software's capabilities in a mixed reality setting. How's that? Multiple virtual aircraft were added to the same airspace. So they had real aircraft and virtual aircraft all in the same airspace, thus the mixed reality. For this test, we are using a model of future advanced air mobility airspace with more than 150 virtual aircraft and their flight plans integrated with the flight path management software 
and the Sikorsky Mission Manager technology to fly the two helicopters in a mixed reality mode. So let's translate that to English. That means that, first of all, in, with current commercial and military aircraft, there's no, nowhere near 150 aircraft in proximity to each other. The, not even close. And that's what they just tested. So not only will this promote full autonomy, it will allow much greater saturation of the airspace. The multiple software systems aboard the helicopters work together, making adjustments to avoid the virtual aircraft and the real aircraft. That meant changing altitude, speed, and direction to avoid virtual collisions or maintain orbital patterns for landing. This technology will usher in a new era of autonomy and aviation that can save lives, aircraft, and resources. Why resources? Because AI-guided aircraft will be much more efficient than human-guided aircraft. This work will inform the FAA, the Federal Aviation Administration, with data on flight procedures to help introduce advanced air mobility systems into the national airspace. So I'm going to say that China, uh, look at the short this week, sorry, look at the other video this week about the EVTOL flying car out of China. China will be much faster than the U.S. in regulatory approval. China will probably give regulatory approval for EVTOLs later this year or next year, for sure. <laughs> um, the U.S. may do the same with a human pilot in who has a pilot's license. Yeah, I can see that. Um, all they're waiting for really is to determine what the separate flight paths for these things will be that's different than commercial aircraft, number one. And number two, to certify the airworthiness of the new vehicles. So that's achievable within this year and next year. Autonomy will take longer, right? So they'll allow these EVTOLs in the airspace for two or three years, and then they'll start allowing autonomy. Why? Because that two or three years will give them the data they need about the reliability of these EVTOL aircraft because they don't want autonomous aircraft falling from the sky and landing on someone's house. Real aircraft currently do that. That does happen. Not as much as it used to, but it definitely used to happen. So two or three years, so we're looking at five years until autonomous aircraft are in the air. I've already said autonomous cars will be here much sooner than that. They already have started to license level four autonomy, which means that the driver can look away and not pay attention. We're, we're two years away from level five autonomy for vehicles probably, max. As you might guess, it will take a little longer with these aircraft, but this is coming to everything. Autonomy is coming to everything. This is why I started the AI Guide, to start mentally preparing you for a radically different future that will be here sooner than most people are expecting. And it's going to overwhelm people. This is going to, all this is going to freak people out, especially at first. So if you like this video, please like, subscribe, and especially share. Also, please support us on Patreon. We really need that 5 or $10. That can really help. Thank you so much. We'll see you next time. Take care. Bye.